Hello, literary activists. I'm dedicating this video to the memory of U.S. Member of Congress, John Lewis, who we lost the 17th of July this year. Lewis was a civil rights leader who made significant contributions to ending racial segregation in the United States. As a committed member of the Student Nonviolent Coordinating Committee in the 1960s, he worked closely with people like Martin Luther King to plan and manage actions, which ultimately created important changes to do with the just and equal treatment of people. The sort of stories we are looking at today have to do with the steps we need to take in order to create a better world. A well-conceived vision of the future is important for forming how we get there, because at some point we are going to have to get our hands dirty and do the work which will make that future a reality. As such, our aims must be achieved in a manner reflective of our goals. John Lewis was tireless in his efforts. He helped plan group actions. He spoke at public meetings. He marched in rallies. He put himself in the way of danger. His shared vision of a fairer world meant so much to him that these efforts did not seem that special. They were just what he needed to do to get the job done. Sadly, many stories represent this sort of effort as superhuman. This honors Lewis less than you might think. The problem is that making change then seems out of the reach of more ordinary humans. This is not true. We need to write better stories which put the power back into everyone's hands and honors everyone's efforts. How else can we go from the problem at point A to a better world at point B? That bridge between those points means everything, and we need the bridge to be well represented and understood by our audience. John Lewis once said, You may find you are the voice crying in the wilderness who will have to walk alone, or you may find only a few devotees who will join you throughout the whole period of your activism. This does not mean your work is not important. It means the part that you play is simply different than those leaders who stand at the front lines of a mass movement. Every contribution is important to the work of change. The term process story is often used for a story about how legislation is made or how research was conducted. We will be using this term for those stories which show the things people do, how it affects them, and what outcomes they achieve when working toward social or environmental change. Many of you may have heard the proverb, the ends justify the means. Two responses to this are, violent means corrupt the ends, or the means are the ends. History frequently supports these later statements. However, we are more often taught or told stories about the history of war, obscuring the value of non-violent action. In particular, according to Peter Ackerman and Jack Duvall in the book A Force More Powerful, when non-violent action is used to achieve power, the people have to develop abilities and exemplify the spirit that are later critical in governing. Empowering individuals to take public action, building consensus on behalf of common objectives, and insisting that laws and leaders derive from the people's consent. Nonviolent power becomes not only the means of achieving change, it becomes the first line of defense for a society's most sacred values. If we want a world of universal peace, then we must create it using peaceful means. Anything less and violence will always seem like the answer, thereby bringing no peace at all. So, nonviolent activism will be the grounding for the sort of stories of process we will be learning how to tell here. I know of many stories that are about social problems or utopias, but not so many about how we get to those utopias. This is sad, but this is then a publishing niche that we can fill.
Examples of stories of process include The March, a graphic novel based on John Lewis's memoir, Walking with the Wind. I am Malala, the girl who stood up for education and was shot by the Taliban, by Malala Yousafzai, and The Overstory by Richard Powers. Only the last one is a work of fiction, and we need the process of change to spark our imaginations so that we play with more and more ideas about how things might be done in a peaceful manner. This sort of story is straightforward to tell. Here are the elements you will often find in stories of social and environmental process. A threat is posed. This is the initiating action of your story. A community's old and sacred tree is about to be cut down. A nearby species of animal is about to be wiped out. Someone a character loves is brutalized for being different, etc. One or more people decide something must be done. These become your viewpoint characters. For the sort of writing we are doing, I would suggest several people should be central to your plot. We want to represent heroism as something more collective and not confined to only those who are in some way special. In that way, you can be a hero, I can be a hero, all of our friends and family can be heroes. A small initial group are gathered. These are the people who give a cause power. Their very presence encourages others to join. In this way, people understand they are not alone in their concerns and feel safer to speak out. They work out a plan or plans. Creating change is not about calling a single rally and expecting immediate results. It takes many actions over time. A core group of people need to consider what actions will create the most positive and powerful impact, thereby drawing more people to the cause. A famous list you can draw from for telling your story is The 198 Methods of Nonviolent Action, compiled by Gene Sharp in his book series, The Politics of Nonviolent Action. I do not support all the methods Sharp puts forward. However, your characters may decide to explore one of the less useful actions and discover why they aren't a good idea. This leads into our next element. Some things work, some things don't. Setbacks are real and people need to be prepared for them. Our characters will need to then think about why certain actions fail. They will need to take responsibility for their failures. They will need to find the strength to pick themselves up and keep campaigning. They will also have to learn how to take care of themselves and one another under these circumstances. The plan is refined. Many plans will be used, and all plans need to evolve as events evolve. Some plans work well under some circumstances, but not so much in others. People's perceptions change of you, your movement, and its goals as events roll out. This will alter what needs to be addressed. Over time, your goal will need to be refined as well. Things start to look up. It may take a while, possibly even generations, and a lot of hard work. But if your cause is just, then things usually do begin to look up at some point. Look into the story of women's suffrage in the West. That took 100 years for women to gain the vote, but succeed we did. Catastrophic failures. A leader dies, a forest is chopped down, an animal goes extinct. The good guys are imprisoned. These things happen. They pose a dark night of the soul, whereby people have to think harder about why they are doing something. A fuller, richer victory and an awareness that the journey goes on. If your characters are truly invested in creating change, then the journey will change them as well, just as happens in real life. Therefore, it becomes more obvious with the happy ending of one journey that more journeys lay ahead. So many real events are underrepresented and can be mined for empowering stories. Events such as the Salt March in 1930 India, 
The boycott of white South African businesses to help end apartheid. The mothers of the Palazzo de Mayo movement in Argentina, who sought to know the fates of their children who had been disappeared by a dictatorial government. Or you can symbolically explore how to overcome current issues through imaginary circumstances. This provides a lot of scope for discovery. I would like to end with an inspiring quote from John Lewis. The most important lesson I have learned in the 50 years I have spent working toward the building of a better world is that the true work of social transformation starts within. It begins inside your own heart and mind because the battleground of human transformation is really more than any other thing the struggle within the human consciousness to believe and accept what is true. Thus, to truly revolutionize our society, we must first revolutionize ourselves. We must be the change we seek if we are to effectively demand transformation from others. Mm -hmm.